Squad starting off on attack while Elevate moves over to defense. And starting out with the ban phase, we have Elevate banning first. It'd be interesting to see who they actually come out with the ban because I feel like I wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of hard breach ban on the attacking side since they are defending first. A lot of people like to play Maverick, so it'll be interesting to see what they ban. They actually banned out Hibana. She's really, really useful on attacking that bottom floor site, so no shocker there. We'll be seeing who Toon Squad decides to actually ban out on their attack, and they got to be wary of this because they're attacking first. So you wanna, don't want to ban a, another hard breacher. You're probably going to be going for someone like Nomad or maybe a soft breacher. Very true indeed. You normally see a hard breacher get banned on through, no matter what, on Clubhouse, be it Maverick, Thermite, or Hibana. This time it'll end up being Hibana, as we can clearly see that. And second attacker banned off from Team Squad is going to be Blackbeard. They understand just how powerful Nog can be. So it would be interesting to see if Nog decides to switch on over to Thatcher or if he'll move on over to another DMR operator being Glass. But Elevate's fourth and final ban is going to be coming off on the board now. I wouldn't be too surprised to see a Mira get banned out, but it's actually going to be Echo. So this will leave Mira up for play, which will be really interesting. I, both of those ops off the board, you usually see that though on a map like this. You want to try to take away as much intel as you can get. Mira isn't too necessary on this map. She does assist helping defenses. We've seen it in Pro League and we've seen it here, but I don't think that she's too impossible to play against that it'll make for a problem, but we'll have to see how these teams adapt to each and every attack and defense round, especially with that Mira in play. And it looks like we're going to be going into CCTV and Cash upstairs. No shocker there on the site pick. Going to be seeing who comes out on the sixth pick ban phase. Looking like they might switch out the buck to a Monty. That's very smart. You can actually push Garage with Monty pretty well. Can't do too much with the buck, especially if they're not going to be playing with a bandit. Don't need to worry about that too much. Going to look like the Doc might six pick to Doc. So we're going to be heading into our first attack round of Toon Squad versus Elevate. I think Rich is trying to find a way to six pick there, but just due to the amount of time that it took for him to actually switch over to the six pick and pick an operator, I think that he just ran out of time there and he's forced to be stuck on the dock. Maybe he was trying to play a bit more of an intel operator, be it uh, Pulse, or maybe switch on over to a bandit, considering that they have no kind of hard breach denial just besides the mutes, but with no Thatcher on the board, I'm pretty sure it'll be just bypassed by Glitch with that Maverick. It'll be interesting to see how Elevate manages to adapt to this round. And just so we notice, there's possibly two C4s on the board between the Mira and the Mute. They didn't use a Valkyrie, even though Valkyrie was available. Probably the right call, because they're probably going to bring two of those bulletproof cams that you can have on Dock in Castle. So it's probably a smart pick to bring that Castle in lieu of a Valkyrie, because they're probably going to be holding Garage pretty strong. We don't usually see this coming out from the Mira, so I'm curious to see how exactly they utilize this, considering that they reinforce both of those walls. You can't really shoot around it. I guess you could break it, but you can't shoot around it. It looks to be more so just information gathering, if anything, for Elevate. It's a bit interesting that they would reinforce both of the garage walls, but we're already going to have Glitch move on through, and okay. He wasted a tank of his blowtorch, but I don't think he's going to be utilizing that blowtorch for the time being, at least on the server side of things, which is really interesting. But already, Brainbow going to be taking control over by Workshop. We'll move on now in through construction. It's interesting that they didn't try going for the garage, although they're probably going to play this very smart with the Monty. Monty really helps, just pretty much a moving wall. They're playing an interesting hold, though. They got castles, both castles downstairs. You can't really rotate unless you go all the way in the basement, which takes quite a bit of time. But if they play this correctly, they'll be able to utilize the fact that there's no way for them to rotate up very quickly. They have garage site held very well, but... They need to get into this wall right now. The only way they're going to get in is if someone can go below and break that mute charge because there's no EMPs on the board. True enough, with that mute jammer being able to stop Talon on that hard breach, it'll be interesting for Glitch to utilize that blowtorch, but in the right spot, he'll be able to take down the mute jammer without <coughs> without much difficulty, excuse me. But with Nog sitting behind a soft mirror now, he has a lot of control dictating how the attack can come on through but with that new capital buff coming out with factor he'll be able to force off nog actually i'm sorry it was vain i think 
vein right below that window. Hopefully he hasn't been spotted out, but oh no! Who could spot it out? It'll be taking a ton of shots, but Factor not being able to find anything. The Doc of Rich is gonna hop on through and take down Factor! Huge fact to come out from Rich, and Factor will bite the dust. Meanwhile, Glitch relocating himself now outside of server. The castle of Vane's gonna peek on through, be lit up to about one HP now. It's in a very tough spot. Yeah, getting that kill is Glitch, and being able to see him through the wall. They actually didn't open that castle barricade using the Monty. Very smart plays coming out. They have a claimer on that window, so if anyone dares to jump out on them, they're going to be able to get them. They know where that dock is calling out. What a great play from using this Monty right now and using the Maestro in, or the Maverick in tandem, trying to figure out where that Monty is actually playing. Unlucky C4 not coming out. 15 seconds left. We got Chef down. We got another kill by Nog. It looks like the defense oh is coming out God, strong. Nog. Down to a 1v4. <laughs> Down the one before Maverick with four seconds left on the board, not looking like he's gonna be get this round, and that's gonna be a win for Elevate. Huge plays coming out from Nog, coming absolutely clutch with that M59 and the SNG11, stopping the plant, taking down his net, his surrounding teammates. Huge round to come out from Nog, and Elevate taking out round number one. I, I honestly, I think they pushed a little too fast before they knew where everyone was. I think not being able to get that main wall open really hindered the ability to really kind of move between sites. I don't think the Monty should have pushed the way he did. Just use him more as a passive intel gathering rather than trying to push out. And I think they were trying to do that, but they just pushed a little too far forward. And it looked like the plant was actually coming down from the thermite. So I'm not sure if they thought that they cleared the site and they just weren't watching any of the rotation holes or what exactly happened, but great play by Elevate to really just salvage what almost looked like an attacker sided round or attacker side round. Very true enough, and it really looked attacker sided just given to the fact that how Glitch was able to utilize that Maverick being able to make holes very small windows to use, and with that ACOG scope just made things all more easier. And just the way that the lighting worked, and with uh. Most likely just with comms happening in Vayne's ear, he wasn't able to put, pay attention to the server wall. All out didn't get made and he ended up paying uh, the price to bite the dust. And Really unfortunate situation right there for Vayne, but nonetheless, Elevate manages to win that round just off the back of Nog coming up clutch. So, despite that round looking to go in favor of Toon Squad, Elevate managed to bring it back. Yeah, and it's looking like it's going to be an interesting attack onto this basement defense. They brought pretty much the same setup. They brought the buck. I, I almost think that they should use the Thatcher. I mean, Thatcher is available, and they're not really using the Thatcher. I don't know how much of a difference the Maverick's actually making, but with the Thatcher not there, this Cade is going to have a lot of impact on how this round really plays out. Sure, they have a Maverick that can spot it, but that just takes a little bit extra time, a little bit more work than they really needed. Although you can really honestly impact trick the hatch and kitchen and Cade trick it. So it's going to be interesting to see with how how it's going to play out. Fair enough indeed. And already the first minute coming close to a close. Rainbow just already taking control. Making sure that everything upstairs is clear on the master side as well as the con uh, construction side of things. He knows that it's clear now. He can go ahead and start to get to work on that main staircase floor. But Chef... Holding a very tough angle now against Vayne, and if Vayne's not careful, could potentially fall victim to Chef's crosshairs. Yeah, and we're going to be seeing a minute out. They pretty much cleared. There's, the defenders aren't upstairs, and I think they know that by now. And so that it's pretty fast clear, and you're going to see this Maverick try to open up this hatch. This is pretty hard to do if you don't do it often, because you could waste a lot more of that gas canister than you really intended on using. You're going to see this right here, how efficiently they're able to do this. And this takes a lot of practice, not utilizing all that gas canister. But we're going to be seeing out how they're going to attack this right now because they realize that the Cade is on the board. So they have to be careful with how they do this because if they don't do this correctly, they're going to run into a lot of issues with losing gadgets and losing a lot of utility to that Cade. Fair enough indeed. Already Talon wasting some flashbangs. Despite not having his first one being blown out, but with the recent changes to Captain Tell, that fire is going to spread on out to this site. But unfortunately, Nog's not going to be able to get anything going. But Rainbow with a huge frag and the perfect timing will take down Nog. That'll be the opening pick onto the defenders now. And the defense are in a 
bit of a tough spot now with that church wall open. Pixel does not have a whole lot of room to move. Yeah, and it looks like that church wall is open. That's a mute off the board with Cave getting one more kill onto Brainbow. So that's a great refrag coming out and just evening it out to a 4v4. I don't think Pixel knows that there's someone in Moto right now. I'm gonna just try to hold this and try not to give up too much ground. Smoke's coming out right now. 20 seconds left on the board. Can they get this diffuser down? They haven't cleared out Pixel yet. That's gonna be one more kill coming out from the Jaeger. Thermite pushing in, has not seen the Valkyrie yet. Pixel pushing out, getting one kill. Pixel going down, we got Factor getting one kill. Vayne getting another, Factor getting another, Factor getting a third. Can, it's a 1v1, has to plant, no time left on the board. Can Cade get this last and final kill? They have Valkyrie cams oh, on site. He doesn't know where what? he is. What? He doesn't know where he is. Has no clue what where he doing? is. Oh, oh my what? God. Factor coming Blue out Jax. with an amazing play. Hello? Did not see him in the corner. Flojax, hello? What? How do you not see him? He, oh my goodness. Oh. How does Factor, he let that happen? Factor just got a 4K on that round. That is... Oh, how does... What? What? Flojax, what? How does... Oh, I'm Anyways. at a loss for words, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, that's really that's a really tough loss for Lojax, and that could have been a second round in favor of Elevate, but wow. If that doesn't define the rest of this game, I don't know what will. This is <laughs> going to be a back and forth the rest of this game. And oh, no. I, he did an amazing job getting that 4K. And honestly, I'm, I'm surprised he got the diffuser down. They must have not had intel in the site to really give him. But they're going to see if they can redo this. And hopefully that doesn't change. The start of this game was that Lojax was actually on the same exact roster before being dropped and moved to the sub role. So it's really interesting to see that this team has picked him up as a coach. But having a bit of a tough time utilizing that Artila that he'll finally be able to put, place it directly in between both of those walls and deny the backside of dirt. So I, I honestly just <laughs> I have no words put to put nicely at how just uh how weird that round ended for elevate because factors on one hp you have lojax using two absolutely insanely powerful weapons he sees him moving on through at least he would hope over by the jukebox but maybe he just blended in with the jukebox and lojax just didn't see him but that's all right we're gonna we're gonna moving on <laughs> Already, Rainbow gonna move on through upstairs and take control. Make sure that it's all clear to move back and and we're gonna be seeing wow. them going downstairs again. So I'm hoping that they were able to turn this around and maybe set up a little bit better. It seems like not having any sort of way to stop the church getting opened up kind of mess with them a little bit and maybe they'll use that Cade a little bit more efficiently. I'm surprised they didn't bring out a bandit or a mute to kind of aid the cave in holding down sight. I think if that sight wall wouldn't have gotten open, it probably would have been a completely different round. But moving on, we have Factor trying to get his drone in the exact same spot right now. We have everyone downstairs and they're covering the flanks. There's no way they're gonna be able to flank up the other blue stairs because we have one more attacker on there. But hopefully, I'm hoping right now that we see an efficient defense and they're able to get an opening frag so that way they can maybe push up the flank and maybe do a little bit more work than they did last round. Sure enough, Talon's going to be taking a goo mine to the leg, but if Pixel pops on through, he'll end up getting fragged. Vayne, however, taking a bit of damage now, sitting inside of blue, and Rainbow finally going to be able to shut him down. See opening frag glitch, watching above that hatch, going to take down Pixel, an absolutely great pick coming out and elevate, already down two members, only a minute left to play. Not going to have to waste two of his toxic babes, but for the time being right now, oh, now goes huge, takes down Factor and glitch, brings things back now to a 3v3, that's the Maverick dead and Rich finally putting things back in favor of Elevate, it's all up to Brainbow and Talon now, the two remaining members of Toon Squad to try to force things back and get them the advantage, but time is not on. Everyone on Toon Squad as Nog pulls up with a 3k Elevate finally taking back the lead and what should be a 3-0 but for the time being it'll be a 2-1
Yeah, that was a great play by Nog. Pretty ballsy, if you ask me. Pushing up like that, that's you gotta you're risking a lot, especially as smoke and not his SMG 11 isn't too efficient, but I guess up that close, it doesn't matter where you hit him because it does a lot of damage when you land all of those shots. It looks like Factor with four kills leading his team right now. We got Talon and Chef with donuts not being able to find the scoreboard just yet. Hopefully in the next round, maybe we'll see something happen of that. But I'm hoping that we see a different round coming out from Cash and CCTV. Hopefully they can get that wall open, the, the main wall open, and be able to actually attack it correctly. Yeah, so we'll just keep moving on. Yeah, so a bit of technical difficulty is happening in on the stream side of things. Uh, we'll try to get things situated out as best as we can. But unfortunately, all Josh and I can do right now is just try to cast you guys as best as we can and try to give you guys some a visual picture in your image, in your mindset. But as of right now, we're sitting at 2-1. The bomb site is situated inside of CCTV and Cash Room. And have Elevate defend the site for the second time. And the last time we were here, Nog ended up going absolutely massive, being super clutch. Yeah, and I mean, we saw the defenders completely collapse on the site and be able to retake that back. But we're going to see the CCTV cash hold. They're playing it a tiny bit differently, not too much from what you guys saw in the previous round on cash and CCTV. But I think it's going to be important to see how they attack this right now because they're going to be able to need to go and take control of garage and possibly open up the main wall rather than trying to pretty much jumble around and trying to figure out how to attack from the other side through construction and that's exactly what they're going to try to do right now we got glitch trying to open up this wall just poke holes make sure that he can get this wall open he's going to be droning in first but unfortunately that mute just stopping him from being able to actually see what he's trying to do things now are going to be coming on through i believe that's vane sitting inside of a garage if i'm not mistaken but talon being pretty cautious with surroundings and Vayne just keeps getting picked on through but with this Monty factor has a bit of a mirror window of his own but he'll be taking a ton of damage sitting out from Rich but will still be able to deck wow Rich goes huge and he'll be able to take down his own teammate Rainbow to 1 HP huge unfortunate timing coming out for Toon Squad and that'll pay the price for Rainbow on that Montane yeah, and you saw that Capital Bolt land on the floor. That's so unfortunate. And Monty does reset, but that's only because he has one HP. Reset that's... was changed, and Talon <laughs> getting an opening kill onto that Doc who's trying to heal himself back up. But they're not opening the wall just yet. You still have someone in Garage trying to hold it down. Monty with 20 HP. Don't know if you want to risk him going through Garage right now, but they're going to be trying to get this guy out of Garage. There's still two ADSs up there with the mirror window. So they're going to have to clear out Garage before they think that they can do anything else. We've got Mira moving back into sight. And it looks like they already opened up that wall. Oh, Nog, Nog coming out huge again. Clearly, this is Nog's sight to hold down. Nog is not one to lose, and it's clearly evident with the way he's been playing the past three rounds, including this one, but my goodness, just give Nog an SMG-11 and an M59 pump shotgun. He'll go to town. It's currently a 2v4 with the defenders having advantage, and unfortunately, Rainbow at 20 HP, so should he get his back blown out from Nog, he'll pay the price, but Talon, however, going to be able to take down Vayne. 45 seconds left to play out with no legion. He does have somewhat of a safe entrance moving on through. But with Talon being able to open up the wall coming in from the Thermite, it'll be a very easy access for going in from Rainbow as well as having control of that mirror window. Yeah, and it's a 3v2. We're going to see how they play this right now. It's going to come down to a Monty with little HP. So hopefully no one's able to tag him or else he's going to be down. Looking like Mir trying to push up. Mir going down. Jaeger pushing through the garage right now. Getting another kill. So down to a 2v1. Monty trying to pick up this last kill. Down to a 1v1. Now down in the last dying seconds of this round. He's getting the plant down right now. There's got to be a call out that's coming out. He has no way of really hitting a long shot. He's using his shotgun and the SMG-11, almost getting the kill through the what? wall. And that's Talon closing out the round. Nog, what are you doing? You have time. Why are you shooting through the wall? Oh, no. Another round that was going Elevate's way just completely thrown away. Oh, that's... Another tough loss coming out from Elevate, and wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nog just absolutely, he tried to make a move, but, you know, ultimately it just did not end up working out in his favor. Just a uh, really unfortunate timing coming out for Toon Squad. I'm sorry, for Elevate.
Yeah, that was so unfortunate, but you have to also think in the dying seconds, you think you don't know exactly where they are if you don't have too much intel on the board. So we're going to be seeing them try to go cash and CCTV again. I wouldn't be surprised to see them change it up just a little bit. It seems like they're having a little bit of an issue with trying to hold Garage. That Monty is proving to be very difficult. I'm surprised they're not using a lesion because the other team's not using Ban or they're not using Thatcher. So you don't have to worry about your goo mines getting completely destroyed it would have been nice to see a sixth pick onto the legion but going into this next round we're gonna see how they play this a little bit differently with pretty much this exact same setups on both sides very true enough indeed not being the absolute solo carry right now for elevate and just he's been absolutely monstrous so really in all in, in practice it could have been 4-0 for elevate right now just uh, due to just careless mistakes and just uh, really overall just great heads up plays coming out from Elevate. The first time that Elevate lost their round, Factor gets a 4k and that last round, not just getting really aggressive, trying to find the frag that he needed to onto Talon instead of playing time. Really, really poor performance coming out from those past two rounds that they've lost. Yeah, and you're going to see them try to pretty much do the exact same take. This is smart. Uh, open up the wall really quickly, 30 seconds in. That's exactly what they should have been doing the whole time. There's no bandit on the board. Don't need to worry about that too much. We're going to see if this Capital can actually clear out this dock this time. I'm hoping with the fire bolts, this is very smart play that I'm surprised we haven't seen before with the new Capital bolts. Very smart play with that Monty. They're pinging him out right now, trying to figure out exactly where he is. Going to be trying to clear him out. But we have Castle trying to hold Rich, down the bottom doing? floor. And we have Factor getting a kill onto rich that's going to be pretty much the garage clear unless they get that castle out of there it looks like mira is actually going to be pushing down also very shocking that they had the mirror pushed down like that kind of out of position but they're going to be trying to take garage and probably do the exact same take that they just did yeah rich just kept moving into the fire instead of away but right away chef's gonna get the frag onto vane that'll put things now again in favor of toon squad having a two-man advantage in the first half of the round this doesn't really bode well for it but you know time and time again we've seen nod in clutch situations just moving on through with that m59 and that smg11 just being able to put everybody on toon squad into the dirt and being able to survive somehow for his team however pixel will now be playing inside of bar that'll be chef joining outside of lounge oh and we're gonna see chef had his his drone set up perfectly. He knows that that Jaeger is there right now. Pixel knows that he's there. It's a matter of who can win this gunfight. We actually have the Zofia backing up, but the diffusers going down right now, getting pinged out, and that's gonna be Chef getting the kill on the Pixel. Down to a 5v2 right now. One is actually down, I believe that is a Capital. So maybe they can capitalize on the fact that was a great C4. That's gonna be two kills coming out from Lojax, down to a 3v2. Monty pushing on through, and that's gonna be the end of the round with another trade going out. In 2019, <laughs> but wow, absolutely monstrous performance coming on through, and a really nice try for Lojax to utilize that C4. But just the timing and positioning coming on out from his team is just not enough. And Rainbow really bullying everybody on Elevate with that Montane play. Yeah, and it seems like they're having issues playing against the Monty I, again. I'm surprised they're not bringing out a Legion or just anything to really stop the monty there's nothing slowing him down there wasn't even too much barbed wire on the staircase so monty's just pushing in freely they need to adjust to this monty right now we're gonna see a six pick come out we're gonna see the cade for the basement this is pretty smart not to show the cade at the beginning so that way they don't bring a thatcher and i'm excited to see how they use this cade again it's been doing really well on the cade very true indeed but the last time we were down here we had low jacks on the kayed and this time around it's going to be rich and one thing i wanted to point out it's a bit unorthodox to do but kind of affected i remember watching Silas gorillas against our bad on this match it was in the first end of it was in the first half of the season he had mechs six pick over to a frost and the last time and it was when they were playing upstairs inside of cash and cctv he places a frost mat over at the end of those garage stairs at the very top and that forces the monsane to be just restricted to those stairs and it also forces for the attackers to try to waste utility and get rid of that frost map but 
you know the last it, it's a uh, you know different teams have different play styles obviously elevate doesn't know about uh doing those kinds of things or they're not comfortable with it and as of right now they are currently in the lower end of round count right now sitting at three to two yeah, and we're going to be seeing the Alibi holding up top. We've seen this a lot. A lot of teams tend to use the Alibi holding up top because if you shoot at her gadget, it's going to locate. It's going to pretty much mark you. And so it's pretty hard to take out an Alibi, but it looks like this Roam Clear dedicating everyone to making sure that they can get rid of this Alibi as quickly as possible because they want to make sure that they have time left to execute on the site. Minute down almost, and we still haven't seen a single kill. Pixel is still upstairs. They actually have Vayne with him. And so that's going to be important to hold his flank and make sure that no one's able to push him from the other side. And if they need to, they can always just drop down and make sure that they can get back to site. And that's what we're going to see out here. It looks like Factor getting the opening kill on the pixel. They know that Jaeger's there. They have that Monty shooting at him. Jaeger's going to be running back right now. Oh. Getting the kill is the Monty. Great job from Rainbow on that Monty. He's really just affected each and every single round that we've seen here. Yeah. Again, in the first half of the round, it's another two, three, uh, three v five for Elevate, and Elevate's just been really unlucky after the first four rounds, and really does not bode well for them at all. Oh, but Lojack's barely gonna be able to escape down blue back into the bomb site, as I think that was gonna be glitch upstairs inside of blue or inside of stocks, excuse me. Yeah, and we're going to be seeing a 3v5 again, and then we're going to see that Monty trying to push down blue. He's just a moving wall at this point. And we have Rich trying to hold this angle, making sure that maybe he can get Monty from the side. It'd be a big pick because Monty really just has been doing so much each and every round. And he just keeps getting pinged. He has no idea where this cam is right now. And we're going to be seeing that they're going to try to go for maybe a church and moto side take. That's looking like what's about to come out right now. Less than a minute to play, and Rainbow still causing a ton of havoc deep inside of blue. But smoke grenades are going to be coming out from Factor. The only two out of the four smoke grenades that are being used, but right now you're going to be... Oh, Nah comes up big with the frag onto Factor, expecting to play. And 30 seconds left to move on through. No more fire bolts to be used. And Talon's going to take down Lojack sitting inside of Moto. Meanwhile, Brain was going to get a frag onto Rich, and it's all up to Nog yet again. And just like that, Talon's going to swing on through, giving a fourth round to Toon Squad. And Elevate, after the first four rounds, are just looking completely lost. Because it's mostly just due to the part that they're losing two roamers in the first half of the round. Yeah, and I mean if it's not them roaming they're still getting put in 3v5 situations they're getting put there really really early it's okay if you lose a person or two maybe a minute 30 or farther into the round but they're losing people within the first minute and they lost two right there so it's going to be interesting to see how they play this right now we're going to be switching sides we're going to see if tunes can do this a little bit better on their roaming game or if they just hold everyone on site and make sure that they get all the frags that they need to switching off the valkyrie to an alibi interesting pick Curious to see how they're going to use it. I can't imagine after them attacking the Alibi, they're going to use her in the same way. But it could come out and they might just have her roam. But moving on to the next half of this matchup. Yeah, if you've ever seen Toon Squad play on Clubhouse and they go Church and Arsenal first time around, you're going to utilize both Brainbow and Factor upstairs inside of Master. Which is pretty much how they do their roam, their, their roam game. They'll have Factor and Brainbow pretty much utilize their reinforcements either in on the hatches or all the way upstairs, which is exactly what Brainbow is going to do right now. They'll also make shotgun holes above and side of Master to look down either into bar or into kitchen, depending on how things go. And I also think that Toon Squad likes to keep the blue, the stocks hatch, um, the, the stocks hatch soft. So depending how Elevate has done Vaudreview, if they've done their homework, it'll be really prevalent and how they managed to go through. But either way, we'll be moving on into round number seven and Pixel utilizing the G36C instead of the R4C. It's starting to be a little bit more common with the recent nerf to Ash ACOG on that R4C since they've taken, since Ubisoft is taking it away. But already we're gonna be seeing some drones coming on through. Factor will be compromised now inside of the garage rafters and Vayne and the Pixel will start to move on through over by the construction windows. So, 30 seconds have now passed on through. It looks like Vayne is going to be trying to make some moves over into Jim. This pixel hops on through. Yeah, and it looks like they're clearing out pretty efficiently right now. They are trying to run out and figure out where that last roamer 
last two roamers might be they know that they're in cash right now they're gonna try to push on through get that iq on low hp but i don't think that'll be an issue they don't know where this roamer is unlucky they couldn't connect on that but able to connect on to the alibi pixel getting the first leadoff kill into this round c4 coming out shooting the c4 what a great shot by pixel pixel connecting onto that mute unlucky downing the mute now they know that she's he's down and that's a great 2k by pixel Huge tracks coming out from Pixel indeed and really great teamwork and drone work happening for Elevate. This now puts them in advantage despite Vayne being shot down to 20 or 30 HP. But really big droning work coming out through for Rich sitting inside of spawn and yet again Pixel with the third onto Talon roaming inside of Bar. It all comes down now to Glitch and Chef downstairs inside of the bomb site. Oh no, but Pixel sees him. Can he get the down? No, he will not. Chef comes up big with the trade onto Pixel and he'll finally be put to rest. But Chef, on the other hand, has now been downed. That's going to be coming down the blue stairs. Oh no, what? Glitch is going to get a frag onto Vayne despite being utilized with the information. Shots are coming now on through. Chef will not get picked up, however. We still have a minute left to play on and through. Glitch in a 1v3 now because he can't pick up his teammate. Chef will finally fall and it's all up to Glitch. You have Lojack sitting deep inside of Oil Pit watching for the cross. But Glitch will be situated now inside of Armory behind the B-bomb looking into Church. But the plant is on Lojax deep inside of Oil Pit. I'll have to rotate around through and drop down the Moda hatch in order to get this plant off. Yeah, looking 30 seconds left. They have to get this plant down right now. I don't even think that's going to be an issue. Planting the diffuse right now is the thermite down to a 1v3. Glitch has full health, but I don't know if that'll help him in this one. It seems like they have the site pretty much guarded. But Glitch down to half HP now with the plant going down. And we got Rich picking up the final kill of that round. Unfortunately, the holes that were set by the defenders are going to be utilized and against the glitch. Really great frags coming out from Pixel throughout that round, finding himself three early frags onto Factor, Brimbo, and Talon, despite almost landing a fourth onto Chef. Not enough firepower or landed shots enough to be able to take down Chef, but nonetheless, Pixel finally getting himself off of that breadstick and puts three more into his pocket. Yeah, and it's, it's honestly... It's interesting to see how neither team was able to roam on that basement defense. Both teams lost people really, really early, and I'm surprised that they didn't call off that mute and the alibi to maybe move downstairs because you can't lose that many people that early. And Pixel doing a great job of capitalizing on the positioning and actually opening up that wall to be able to get those picks. But we saw the alibi switch off to that Valkyrie, gonna be going to the exact same site. How they are going to hold it is what we're going to see right now. Probably a better pick onto the Valkyrie. You play with a lot more intel rather than just playing on pure fragging power of alibi. Alibi's gun's okay, but I think that Valkyrie's intel and the gadget that she has is a lot more important to the team as a whole rather than the alibi using the gadget for herself. Yeah, I'd completely agree with you there. I don't understand why teams do take alibi i just feel that she's got nothing to bring to the defenders she has a lot of selfish utility other than just you know maybe tricking attackers it's it's happened before where alibi's gadget has worked where a player can stand inside of the alibi positioning and be able to try to fake out a attacker but the key difference in alibi and her gadget is that if you've put on different uniforms your uniform will stand on out compared to those decoys, so it's really easy to spot out that alibi if you've managed to change your uniform. Yeah, we're going to be seeing Pixel pushing in, pushing in the different side. I don't think there's anyone upstairs currently. All five are downstairs in the basement. Probably a smarter play rather than trying to maybe have someone flank or have someone roam later on in the round. And they do a great job of roam clearing. Elevate really shows their strength in all of that. And it's important to see though how fast Elevate is honestly roam clearing. This just speaks this just speaks to their efficiency and how well they're doing. Because I, I can't imagine that they're gonna have any more issues with roam clearing on the other sites, given that they're doing so well on this site. Yeah, currently you have Nox situated inside of the toilets now as Pixel will be moving on upstairs with Vayne clearing out those roamers. But I believe that both Rainbow and Factor have rotated away and made their way back onto the bomb site. But already, Nog is going to be moving on through. Currently not going to get spotted out, but he'll utilize a frag grenade to be able to take down the bulletproof cam at the deep end of that hall. But going to be blasting open Kool-Aid wall. He'll not be finding himself deep into Moto. 
unfortunately not being able to find himself getting any kind of damage. Yeah, and you're gonna see Pixel try to just go for a little cheeky laying down. He knows where that defender is. Try to get the headshot, and they said oh, that when they got no. rid of the ACOG on Ash, it would make a difference. But Chef getting an opening kill. We got Brainbow following that up with one more and utilizing that hole that Nog made back onto himself. We got IQ holding down. She knows someone's in blue right now. Vayne gonna be rotating back, maybe to try to help out on the church side take. We got both your heartbeats are still alive, so there's still utility left on the board to use to get this church wall open, or maybe they'll just go in through the locker side where it's Nog put that hole. It's really unfortunate for Pixel to die there because he had all the information, all the right info to really just find that frag, but just the poor crosshair replacement and better fragging power coming out from Chef was really big and C4 is going to come on through, but Brainbow gets a huge frag onto Vayne, comes up big, but no, that'll be Rich being able to take down Brainbow, and Chef comes up huge with another frag onto Rich, 30 seconds left to play, it's all up to Lojax. And this next round looking to be another round in favor of Toon Squad, just due to the fact that the time constraints are in the favor of the defenders right now. But he's going to be moving on now over by Moto, not having too much time or space to work with. Glitch going to be there inside of blue, takes down Lojax, and Toon Squad will find out their fifth round. We'll be moving on to round number nine with a two round lead in favor of Toon Squad. Interesting that Nog put that hole there. I understand why he put it there, but I think that none of his team was ready for it because. When, as soon as Nog died after putting that hole there, it pretty much made it impossible for anyone to kind of run through the hallway to go towards Moto in that hallway. It just made it pretty much impossible for him to be able to do anything with that intel, and it, it just gave defenders an opening to really shoot through. And you saw that the mute tried running through that, but unfortunately wasn't able to pick up the kill because he was aiming at the attacker's feet. Fair enough. And a clash look at six picked out of the way for a castle. Meanwhile... Vayne going to be switching over to a Capiton instead of an IQ, just due to the fact that there hasn't been a whole lot of electronic gadgets coming out for the defenders, but I, I see why they're bringing the Capitol because they saw the clash, but the mind games coming out from Toon Squad are going to be the better ones, at least in this round, according to the operator sheet, switching out Factor from the clash over to the castle. Yeah, and we haven't seen this site played in a long time. A lot of teams don't really favor it anymore, especially after the two upstairs sites got more of a buff with the newer map being the rework that happened. And it's going to be interesting to see how they play this. You don't honestly normally see the site getting played. So I'm curious to see what exactly they decide to do with it. It's a pretty hard site to hold even after the rework, but I'm hoping that maybe they have something up their sleeve that'll help them be able to hold this a little bit better than most teams are. Chef coming out with a, with a spawn peak, but there's no one there for him to capitalize on. I'm surprised we haven't seen more spawn peaks come from Toon Squad. We saw it in the last match that they played earlier, but we're going to see Pixel pushing in through Garage right now. And this seems to be every single time they're trying to push him into Garage because he seems to be getting very, very impactful opening kills. Very true indeed, but the door over on the Garage side over by Lounge has been barricaded off. Pretty sure Lodrex will be able to give out those comms, considering that he just droned up the cash stairs. But Factor will not be spotted out, and he'll come up for a late push. It'll actually be uh, Pixel moving on through into cash, so Factor's in a really good spot now. Uh-oh. Vayne's going to be hopping on through, but he gets away! Scott free! And he actually hops on through. Factor, hello! Finally getting the frag on to Vayne. Poor droning coming out from Elevate, and that'll put things again in the favor of Toon Squad. Yeah, and you saw he almost got it on that tiny pixel peak he had. We still have Chef upstairs though, and we still have a lot of utility left on the board for the attacking side. Unfortunately, Capital would have been really, really helpful to have, especially on this site. But Pixel, hopefully with this fragging power, will be able to at least get a little bit more distance and get a lot more opening kills than they have been getting so far with a minute 30 down they haven't made too much progress they actually lost one of their most important utilities pushing in a garage right now we have lojax holding it from the cat the catwalk and we're going to be seeing if they can actually make a push for the site fair enough indeed we have 80 seconds left on the clock now as nog just can't make up his mind whether to push through lounge or downstairs in through blue this time around, looks like he's going to be moving on through blue, but just watching the hatch, trying to see if he can spot Factor, who's sitting inside his stocks this last time. 
trying to make a rotate on out, but Factor has instead moved on through into Moto. He'll move on through into Church, so he could get a really nice flank over onto Nog. And with not any time on his side, Nog will be taken down to about 1 HP. However, you have Factor moving on through up the blue stairs now, and this is in a really good spot right now for Factor to make a push. He creeps on up the stairs be quietly there, but Talon's going to get the opening frag onto Nog. However, 5v3 now for the Toons, but Brainbow has been downed. He uses his last stem pistol. Factor finally coming up the stairs. Finds a third onto Pixel after taking down Rich. It's all up to Lojax yet again. Elevate looking completely lost. And this next round looking to be in the favor of Toon Squad. There you go. Toon Squad for the time being will secure that tie. And Elevate's chances of making playoffs have completely diminished. Well... Wow. Factor was really, really impactful on that round. I really feel like there was nothing to stop him. It didn't feel like they had any sort of flank watch or anything. And they, the Nomad's still on the board. I'm curious to see why they're not using Nomad at all. Maybe they're relying too heavily on a single set of smokes, like the Capita, rather than trying to maybe put some flank watch or put... Nomad pretty much makes it so that you can't do anything. You can't push without getting completely thrown across the room. But with that being said, it, it happened, and he got a huge 3k on the board. Did a great flank, honestly. Whatever intel they had was really helpful to them. Very true indeed, and at least for the time being, Toon Squad has to secure that tie. And if Elevate were to turn things around, it's a little too late for them, as they, at the most, they can walk away with just two points on the board, and unfortunately, they will be end up relegated out of challenge league season nine or going into challenge league season 10 and they'll have to re-qualify through the qualifiers that'll happen in the next three months yeah but bringing it back down to this match we have six to three with toon squad ahead and they actually just lost two drones on the attacking side that's a huge loss honestly you can't lose intel that early especially when you only are given 10 we're gonna see rainbow maybe going for a flank and unfortunately get seen I think Elevate's probably just. See. I think Elevate's probably just given up at this point, just due to the fact that they've lost four drones on attack. Their drone economy not at all there, and Factor going for a really early peek over at the garage. He'll take some damage and trade some health points off with Pixel, but due to the fact that Factor is on dock, he'll be able to heal himself back up to 100 HP. Yeah, and they're honestly all attacking from one side rather than trying to at least make sure no one's able to flank up the other staircase. They're probably going to be going for Garage right now, pretty much doing the exact same thing that we saw Toon Squad trying to do. We're going to be seeing this nice little Maverick trick trying to come through, trying to make sure that he can open up this wall to help out his team. An interesting tactic that some teams have used. It's probably one of the weirdest things that I've ever seen because you can just buck it open now. But it's very, very useful tactic that a lot of very... Discipline teams that have used and have discovered. Very true indeed, and already Rich taking a bit of damage. I believe it was from Glitch, but right away Rich gonna get the frag onto Factor, and uh, Pixel be moving on through over by Toilets. Rainbow sitting inside of construction alongside Chef and the Master. With Rainbow on this pulse, will be able to utilize his scanner up to nine meters in front of him. And right away, Glitch going to get a trade on to Nog. So if Pixel's not careful, it looks like his position has now been compromised. But you have Chef sitting on top of the Master bed. If Pixel's not careful because he hasn't joined it out. He could be met with some pretty early frag, uh, uh, early scuffle. But right away, just like that, Chef going to make the wrong move and jump on through. He'll pay the price and get his head taken off. And things are now back in favor, and Pixel goes huge yet again. Rainbow gonna fall. Can he find a third onto the Mute of Talon? No, he will not. That'll be the Mute of Talon getting another frag, but Talon goes huge onto Vayne, who's had a very unlucky game against Toon Squad. Just cannot seem to find anything working for him. But Rich being able to take down Glitch all in the 1v4, but Talon moves on through. Lojack for the trade, and finally Elevate will put themselves back on the board, but too little too late. And they're now two rounds away from being able to tie up against Toon Squad. Pixel got a little too aggressive right there at the end. It didn't even look like anyone was droning him in, which might, honestly, that might be the reason we see the scoreline that we do. Sure, they won that round, but Pixel wasn't being droned in at all. He's just face checking everything. And because he's Ash and because he himself is a great player, I, I it, you can use it to his advantage, but... 
I feel like we're not seeing a lot of team play coming out in terms of droning and drone work. I mean, they did lose four drones in the opening, in the prep phase, but they're still not droning Pixel in. It seems like he's not even really droning himself in. So I'm curious to see why that is, but it might just be the frustration that's starting to come out. Fair enough indeed, and honestly, I just think it could just be due to the lack of experience coming out from Vayne, or just maybe just comms are not really working for Elevate right now. But he's been pretty subpar so far throughout this matchup, dying every single round, only picking up two frags. Being on an entry roll with Pixel really hasn't been able to do so much for him throughout this matchup. Maybe it's just due to the fact that he's off to a slow start, or that he's only been on the roster for about a week now, but... It's, it's really tough right now for Vayne sitting at 2 and 10. But moving on in, the 11th round will now be played downstairs yet again. You'll have another roam coming on through for Rainbow and most likely Factor upstairs. And this roam strat coming out from Team Squad is one that's not really seen a whole lot. You can tell that they've gone to the drawing board and really tried to make something happen and make some kind of roam game work with Toon Squad. And these meat jammers that are coming on through prevents drones from hopping on through. And it'll also allow for Toon Squad at least to kind of use those meat jammers to kind of give them some kind of uh, audio cues when the, when the meat jammer gets shot. Yeah, and you're seeing they're starting to kind of drone, but I feel like the drone work is going to fall off as this round goes on. Glitch taking almost a little bit above 25 HP of his life. Rich dropping down to that blue. It's a very risky climb up, but luckily no one peeked him. I don't even know if they know it. There's two roamers upstairs right now, which is going to be very unfortunate. Coming back to that face checking, they don't know there's people upstairs, and they probably won't know until it's too little too late. But we're going to see them start to try to work on trying to get the site open rather than trying to actually deal with the roamers themselves. And Factor going for a little bit of an aggressive peek right now. Hopefully he can capitalize, and he does. Getting the first opening kill onto the Maverick. I don't think they got that hatch open. If they did, it was very, very unfortunate that he couldn't get that kill a little bit sooner. We got Nog pushing down the stairs. They haven't even cleared out the roamers right now, and Nog is pushing down the stairs. I think this is probably the wrong call. They need to make sure that they get the roamers killed because there's two roamers, not one. And it looks like they're just going to go for a site execute. This might just be a very aggressive site push that they're going to try to do. Almost getting that kill was Vayne with Lojax getting two kills. Now we're going to see this start to come out with the aggression. They got the defenders holding from the hallway. Got Lojax with the third kill. Nog going down from Talon. Another kill from Pixel. This 1v3. I don't know what happened. This aggressive push worked. But we're going to see Rainbow trying to retake the site. We don't think, I don't think it's going to win. And it's Pixel closing out the round. Round number 11 goes in the hands of Elevate, and really this teamwork needed to happen a whole lot sooner for them, but I guess it's better late than never, as you could say, <laughs> for Elevate, and one round away from being able to tie up Toon Squad, which would be a bit unfortunate if they were to tie, because I believe that would re result in no interview happening at the end of this game, but Toon Squad are one, Toon Squad are one round away from being able to win it out, but if the tie happens, we actually do end up having an interview, so... Uh, my apologies for that wrong information, but last round and Elevate able to swing things back. Yeah, and it's interesting. They pushed straight to site. I think they realized the positioning of the defenders and pretty much pushed them out of both sites. They didn't have any issues trying to deal with the trying to deal with the roamers. They just let him be up there. Roamers were playing a little bit passively, probably expecting more of a roam clear than actually happened because there was no roam clear. Very smart call coming out from Elevate to make sure that they just push site. Probably the right thing to do. But as you see, Vayne is just not finding the scoreboard right now. He's 10 deaths on the board. He's died every single round. So it might need to they might need to pull him back just a little bit or switch up the roles that they have. Because having someone on that fragging role, you need them to get kills, or at least put them in positions to get kills themselves. Yeah, Vayne's normally been a pretty consistent fragger, but I, I honestly think that it's just due to the fact that he's new to the team. It's due to the fact that, you know, he's only... This is his first ever Challenge League debut in this match day. And Elevate, I believe they tied in their first matchup, so... Really, the only... The most that they can walk away with is two points, and at the very minimum, one point, considering that they tied against Scylla's Gorillas in their first matchup over on Stokes TV. And... Really just, it's really unfortunate that Elevate's in this position. They're no longer able to qualify for playoffs. 
They're going to have to be auto relegated out and move on into Challenge League Season 10 by qualifiers should they manage to make it. But we'll have three months to sit and think about their options. We'll exactly see what happens now as Pixel moves on through into Toilets. Coming in through Strip and Nog moving on through into Kitchen. Probably going to try to make something work. But this is actually the first time we're going to be seeing a glass come out from Rich. I mean, the first time we're seeing the glass, I think this entire matchup, which is interesting because usually the smokes play a big role in how you take a lot of these sites. And they're going to be seeing them maybe try to push down blue again with this glass. Pretty reminiscent of people trying to push down dirt, but we have him laying down, being able to get that headshot. And Ooh. Rich doing just that on to glitch. Ash Pixel taking a lot of damage and not being able to capitalize on that kill because of the amount of health that he had. Talon getting that kill. Very good kill. But we have a lot of the defenders on low HP and same thing with the attackers. So it'll be interesting to see how the rest of this round plays out. But again, Brainbow going to be down to Rich sitting inside of Blue. And he'll have to crawl on through. But Chef, however, giving Vayne his 11th death. Really unfortunate timing for Vayne and just a really unlucky match for him. But... That's going to be an easy frag oh. for Rich as he utilizes the pixel. And this round looking to go in the hands of Elevate. And yet again, Nog comes up big. That'll be a tie and Toon Squad just absolutely getting massacred the past three rounds. And big props to Elevate for being able to come back. But like I mentioned before, it was too little too late. And we end our game in a draw. Yeah, it was an interesting matchup. And you see that Nog, Lojax, and Rich all pretty much putting the team on their back. Nog did a lot of clutching in that match, and he has five assists, so he pretty much had an impact on almost all of the frags that went on in that matchup. Very true indeed. So, unfortunately, this game will result in a tie, but great job for Elevate being able to swing things back. But, like I mentioned before, too little, too late, and their playoff hopes and dreams have been absolutely crushed. But at least they can stick it to Toon Squad and give them only one more point to move on through. So, Toon Squad and elevate both move on with only two points throughout the day and which is pretty interesting <laughs> considering that both of toon squads matches and vicious uh they both end up in ties and really big props for elevate being able to come back and at least you know uh secure that one point yeah and i mean the last three rounds they streamed together it came out pretty much from big pushes that that came out from the attacking side and very aggressive plays. I think they realized early on they don't necessarily need to go chase down all of the roamers because it seemed like they were losing people too early on and they're not doing too much droning. So I can't, I'm not surprised that they didn't try to clear out the roamers. With no drone work, it's pretty hard to do. They instead, just attack the site straight up and they were able to get the opening frags onto those sites to really open up the site, especially with the fact that Toon Squad had a bunch of roamers not on the site so just pushing through site actually ended up working out very true indeed and uh also just pretty much i guess just ignoring the fact that they had two roamers upstairs kind of helped them out because they were able to put five on site for the attack so that allowed elevate to take advantage of the weaker numbers that toon squad had on defense and allowed them to push through into the site being able to take control of the bomb site and allowing them to be able to so to speak, uh, went out the round, but you know, on, honestly, those first four rounds, they should have all been elevates wins, but you know, the second round that happened with Toon Squad Factor getting that 4k and Lojax just completely missing him. That was a yeah. round that really hurt them. And then in the fourth round, you had Nog just going absolutely massive, but just going really aggressive against, I believe against Talon inside his server on that Thermite, just trying to use that M59, but Either way, that ends up in a tie. So we're going to be taking a quick break, and we'll be right back with an interview with Chef.